Good morning and welcome to America's Home Cooking. Today I was going to make a chicken thighs, a bone and skinless chicken thighs and a tomato sauce and put it over pasta. And today the pasta I was going to show you how to make was uh, one that, di that doesn't have gluten in it. Well, I sat there and used my pasta machine. I followed the instructions. All the pieces are broken except this piece. These are the only pieces that didn't break. So I am not going to be able to make a gluten-free pasta. I don't know what kind that, I mean, I use whole grains, but it didn't work. It, it broke. I'm still trying to get the rest of the pieces apart that aren't broke and I cannot, the machine wedged it so tight, it's stronger than I am. I've got it here. I have soaked this part. I have struggled to get this off, to unscrew this and this. And you can see the part is broken right in here. So I don't know what kind of non-gluten pasta they use, because they say I'm supposed to be able to do it, but I'm gonna call them today and reorder my parts. So that went out the door. So instead, I am going to have, see I let you know things are going on in my kitchen at the same time. I am gonna take these and I'm gonna put some buttermilk with them. And I'm gonna put Italian seasons. You know how you buy it in the jar and I'm gonna use that for flavoring today. But it was not what I wanted to do today. <laughs> Let's see. I'll be back after you'll find my seasoning. Okay, I found it. I've got to clean that pantry out again. Just gonna add some buttermilk to coat them. And then we're gonna put these spices on them. And I'll be serving bulgur with this, definitely, and vegetables. And bulgur is a grain. Mm. We'll see how this comes out. See, what the buttermilk's gonna do after you dry the chicken is it's gonna stick. Because I use whole grains, I have to use more seasonings added because they have their own flavor as well and they can drown out the other if you're not careful. That's why you see me being a little heavy handed with it. I had lost a recipe. I had marked it. I bought the stuff for it and I couldn't find the recipe. That's what happens when you get a lot of cookbooks. You start reading and going through them and then you realize you can't find what you're looking for. I can use them to season stuff. So I'll go ahead and use my plain breadcrumbs that I made. Now, if you want 
to season your breadcrumbs up? You can. Once you get your breadcrumbs going, you can do whatever you want with them. You know, if you're using whole grain flours and stuff, and you make breadcrumbs out of them, you just imagine the flavor that you're going to get when it comes to uh, cooking. See? Things were so much different than what they are today. They make everything so bland. The pasta's bland. They peel the potatoes, take all the nutrients out. Uh, the flowers are bland, and then you put a pinch of this or this and you can taste it. But when you use these whole grains, you get all these nutrients, but you have to increase on the flavoring so you can enjoy them. Now today, not the, uh, I'm going to use my all blend oil that I've made. time I don't want to because I have safflower, sunflower, peanut, and olive oil in that with the vitamin E. So uh, I'm going to do breadcrumb, I'm going to breadcrumb these and we're going to see how this comes out. I'm going to get my vulgar out because I'm going to need that. <laughs> Now, red bug bulgur comes from the Middle East. All right, and that's the one I'm using today. We have different bulgurs, but this is red bulgur, though. And I love bulgur, I really do. I enjoy it so much. I cook it with onion and it's just delicious. If you don't like whole grains, I can understand that, but I just happen to really like whole grains. Now, I don't have to do much to make this nutritious because the bulgur is going to cover a lot of that. But of course, this is already sourdough bread that I have made and toasted, so I'm also going to get those as well. Then you have the cultures of the buttermilk. Gee, you took all the buttermilk. This is just a different way.
turn out nice. They should. I have made such plans for dinner today. Remember that every three ounces of any kind of meat or fish is 25 grams. Milk for every ounce, remember an ounce is two tablespoons, is one gram. And when it comes to eggs, every two eggs is 13 grams. So if you can memorize those, you can look at a meal and go A, B, C, D. Now most of the time they will say a piece of fruit is one gram. And they will sit there and say, you need a cup of vegetables, that is one gram, to help you. So when you look at a plate and you know what you're serving your family, you go, okay, I got this, 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 and you can count and know that they're getting what they need.
vegetable stock, you can use vegetable stock, a beef or lamb, veal, pork, or whatever stock you have. If you don't have any whey or any of the stocks, you can just use plain water, it doesn't matter, but by adding these other ingredients, ways and stocks, you pick up the value of it. And if you wish, for people who don't know, whey is a byproduct of cheese making. Okay, the onions are sauteed. So now you can add vulgar. Whoa, that's a cup. We're going to add a cup of vulgar. Then you're going to add some salt to your taste, like you would rice or pasta or anything. And you're just covering it, just a little bit past the gut of it, a little over. And just when it comes to boiling, you turn it down on low. And just leave it, and it will absorb all that fluid. If you need more fluid, you can always add it later. Cover the bulgur with a little bit of fluid above that line, above it, and let it cook. Once it comes to boil, I turn it down, and usually 90% to 95% of the time, it will be done when the liquid is gone. If it's not, and you want it a little more cooked, all you have to do is add a little more fluid and put the lid on it, and just let it sit and cook. For the bread, the cranberry nut sourdough bread, you're going to turn your oven to 375.
he's out of one but always likes the bread to be at least one inch above the rim. And that's pretty much where I'm at. much. It. <laughs> so now we have got the bread going. Now the stuff on the bottom you can cook with. It's the building blocks of protein. So don't think you have to throw it out or stay in. You've already done all of that. Is if I break it. Okay. Well, the other's going to get the bread going. Okay. You're putting your bread in now. minutes and I'll see you when those are done. Okay here is the chicken. Now because my breadcrumbs are darker than the ones you buy in the store, my chicken looks darker from it because I was using whole grains. Just bringing that to your attention. Now we'll wait for the bulgur. Okay here is the bulgur. get a thicker grain where it's only cracked in half. This is a finer grain, so it's more like a mush, but it's not. And this is the bulgur. All right, we're going to wait for the bread now.